Hello everyone, welcome to Data Academy. My name's Oliver. Today we'll be looking at the three basic categories of data types. The first one is numbers and we have three types in it, integers, floats, and complex. An integer is a number without a decimal and a float is a number with a decimal. A complex number is a real number plus an imaginary number. J represents the square root of negative one. And then we have text and the data type in text is a string. A string is a collection of characters and numerals. And finally, booleans. A boolean is either true or false. All right, now let's put these into action. So now we're in shell and first let's make an integer. We will use a variable called x. And our integer is gonna be five. And we can have a float called y it'll be 1.5 and we will also have a complex number called z and it will be 3 plus 2j we can convert between these types if we want to make x a float then we just say float x if we want to make y which is 1.5 into an integer we just say int y and it just removes the decimal there is no rounding and we can also convert these into complex numbers. We know x is 5. But we cannot convert a complex number into an integer or a float. We can also do some basic arithmetic on these. So adding is the addition sign. My uh, subtraction is the dash. Multiplication is the asterisk. And Division is the forward slash. Division will always give you a float, unless you do something like this. There's also two more useful operations, which are floor division and modulo. What floor division is, is normal division, except it gives you the largest possible integer. And this integer is either less than or it's equal to the normal division result. So 10 divided by 3 is 3.3333 and so on. Now, if we do floor division, which is denoted by two forward slashes, it would give us 3. This is the largest possible integer. And modulo will just give us the remainder. And modulo is denoted by a percentage symbol. It's 1. Now let's look at some text and strings. A string is denoted by we'll call our variable string. It is denoted by two quotation marks. These could be double quotes or single quotes. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Inside, we will say, hello world. Now, if we call string, we can see it says, hello world. If we want to find out the length of this string, we can use the length function, which is len. And then inside the brackets, our parameter is going to be the name of this string, 12 characters long. Perfect. And if we want to index the string, which means find what item is at a certain position within it, we would just say string and then square brackets and then the position of the item. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Python uses zero based indexing. Normally we start counting from one, we go one, two, three, but with Python, it starts from zero. So if you wanted the first item in this string, we would be asking for the zero with item. And this would give us H. Now, if we ask for the second item, it's going to give us E. And the third item, it's going to give us L. Another thing I'm going to show you guys is string concatenation. So let's say we have two strings. A is foo, and B is bar. A plus B. What do you think this is going to give us? Foo bar. What if we want a space between the two? We could concatenate A plus a space, a string, and all that's inside the string is a space, and then we add b. Alternatively, we could do string formatting. Now, the way we do string formatting is we type f, f means format, and then quotes. And then we say, if we want to put a variable inside the string, we will enclose it in curly braces. So a space b. And this does the exact same thing as a plus the space plus the b, foo bar. 
And now let's say we want a whole sentence. My favorite color is blue. So color is equal to blue. And my favorite food is pizza. Food is pizza. Now we can say F to format the string. My favorite color is curly braces to enclose our variable color. And my favorite food is, and once again, curly braces to enclose the variable pizza. My favorite color is blue and my favorite food is pizza. And that is how you format strings. All right, booleans now. So let's say our booleans name is X and always capitalize the first letter. X is true. Now, we can also change, we can convert a integer or a float or a string into a boolean too. So let's say x was one, then what is the boolean of x? It is true. The only integer that is false is zero. That's false. Everything else, negative 100. That's true. Same for strings, similar. An empty string is false. Now, even if it just has one space, it's true. A common use case of Boolean in the real world is comparing two objects. So let's say X is equal to 10 and Y is also equal to 10, but Z is equal to 12. Then is X equal to Y? To check that, we can put two equal signs. The reason we put two equal signs instead of one is because when we put two, it checks whether two things are the same. When we use one, that's for assignment of a variable. That's why we're using one equal sign for assigning X, Y, and Z. Now, is X equal to Y? It's true. Is X equal to Z? No, it's false because 10 is not equal to 12. And you will be using Booleans a lot for comparing different data types. Well, thanks for watching this introduction to basic categories of data types. In the next part, we will be looking at more advanced ones, such as sequences, mappings, and sets. See you all next time.